Welcome back to another beginner's video for the Unreal Engine 4 and today I want to talk about what are actors and what are components. Uh, if we take this to a very very ground level basically actor is pretty much anything in the game world you might have uh, so by default if you would select any of the default shapes that you have in the level and look in the world outliner here at the top right you can see that this is a static mesh actor um, but well this one right now doesn't really have any logic attached to it and if we want to have like a pre-made thing that has some logic maybe it can walk maybe it has like HP or whatever it might have uh, you will probably need to create a new actor for that so that you can add code to it so how do you do that is by right clicking in the content browser and then you can create a blueprint class and here you have loads and loads of options uh, to, to choose from uh, by default you might have this menu uh, collapsed so you might want to open this up and have a look because here are loads and loads of options that you can choose from uh, so real quick let's just let's just go over the most important ones so we have the default actor which doesn't really come with anything it's an empty actor so you can add whatever you want to this then you have a pawn which can be possessed so that's like a character technically but not exactly uh, but if you want to make a character you would probably want want to use this one this can be used for the AIs or the player that you are uh, playing as also you have the player controller option you can pick that one because every single character has a player controller attached to it as well by default it is called player controller but you can obviously create your own you also have the game mode class uh, which basically stores the information about the current game level and uh, not level but like the mode itself so you could have like if you if let's say you have like some timer or whatever uh, perhaps that would be a good idea to store that one in here or if it's a single player game you could store score in there as well perhaps well there are many many uses for that you can obviously store any information in any actor you want you could just create a another just like a regular empty actor and then store time or uh, some scores in that one as well but it would be probably better to store it in a game mode uh, then you have the actor component so this is just a thing that you can attach to something so if we speak now about the components so we have the actor is the like the parent of the whole thing so like the the parent of the group and you can add components so you can add other things to it so technically any uh, any actor can become an, a component at any time uh, so we'll, we're going to speak about components uh, once we create an actor uh, so but uh, we also can choose many options right here we can have like the drag drop operation so you can drag and drop like UI things like items between inventories maybe if you followed my inventory series you probably already noticed me using this one um, also you have the full edge types so the grass and stuff um, save games all kinds of all kinds of many different options if I'm gonna talk about all of them this is gonna take forever so uh, let's just create a regular actor now let's just keep it basic and let's just let's leave it be new blueprint so we can drag that into the world uh, this round thing right here is not visible when we press play so if you press play you can see it's not there uh, but this is just so that we can see this in the in the level itself so that we know that there actually is something so let's open this guy up and let's see what do we have here so basically on the left we have uh, the components like I mentioned we have the components menu we're going to talk about that in a second then we have the functions variables so that is where you would store your logic uh, some things that might happen some actions in the functions and you have the variables so let's say like your score your HP or whatever that you might have um, and then on the right side you have the details panel uh, by default if you select the self so this guy right here so that's the this blueprint and then you have the default settings uh, for the actor itself you can also uh, you can select this one here or you can just click on this class default and you have the default settings so you have all kinds of stuff so whether you want to have like the event tick which is basically an event that is ran on every frame of the game and you have some other different kinds of options here as well now if we speak about components so on the left side on the components panel we can add a component and we can choose we again have loads and loads of options from which to choose from so for example let's see we have we have some widgets so technically we can add like the user interface uh, in the world as well so it would would maybe be like a 3d like screen or whatever uh, that we can have with us so maybe if you have like futuristic hologram stuff uh, then maybe widget would be a good option for you also we can have a 3d text render as well we can have like static and skeletal meshes in there uh, different cameras um, 
particle systems. We have some physics handles so that we can manipulate like some physics actor. If you have maybe ever played the uh, Gary's mode, you have that physics weapon where you can like pick up a physics object and make it fly away. So you could do that with the physics handle over here. Then we also have a projectile movement that would be like your bullets, arrows, uh, maybe your magic skills or whatever, something that is flying with high speed. So there's loads and loads of options that we could do. So let's speak about the most basic ones, the one that you might probably be using a lot. So that is a static mesh. Uh, so you might want to add like some kind of a cube or something so you can interact with it, uh, maybe like a chest or whatever. So you would add that over here through static mesh, then select its mesh. And what you got to remember is that the logic itself and the mesh are totally different things. So you could make a, like a car that's not even looking like a car, but it is handling like a car. Same goes for the character. You can make it into a cube. So it doesn't really matter because what does matter is the uh, other components. So if you want to make this into a character, you would have to add like a movement component to this. And then this cube will be able to walk around. What is also important to remember that at any point in time, you can attach any actor to your character as well. So for example, uh, let's say you want to have a sword in your game. So you would create an actor for that sword and then you can attach that to your character. So I have already some things uh, pre-created. Uh, so if we would press play over here, I have a um, like a position set on top of my character. So if I walk up to any of these items and press Q, you can see I have that cube attached to my character. What is important is that you don't want it to collide with your character technically because it's going to mess with your physics. So technically, if you would want to have like a sword, you want to ignore the pawn. So we already spoke about the collisions in the previous videos. So make sure you watch that one. And in a second, I'm going to show you what actually happens when the physics, different physics actors interact with your character. To attach things to your character, you got to make sure that the, uh, the thing that you want to add to your character is a movable thing because I can't so if I press Q on these any of these things that I have in the world over here I can't attach any of those to my character because they are static in the world as you can see I can add that cube over there because well it is not static but if everything else if it's static we can't do that we can add any of these things because they are technically set to movable uh, probably you're now wondering well some of the gems were on the ground with physics and some were just hanging on, are around and they were static so uh, as you can see i got some errors uh, that is because well i was trying to attach different game objects so the floor and the stairs and etc to my character and it gave me an error that if we go to the end of it it says that the static mesh component which is static to it and the thing gets aborted because it can't add it to the character if it's not movable so if we would click on this thing right here so this is a mesh actor so it's just a regular mesh dragged into the world uh, this one has physics enabled on it so these six have physics enabled on it but that's not what's important what is important uh, that the mobility is set to be movable because these guys right here as you can see they don't have physics but this one does and as long as it has movable we can attach that to our character and here is the location you can see where the thing gets attached to to my character so if I would now go to my character blueprint and I'm going to show you how I did that and that's very simple all we do is we have an event on the queue we do some basic uh, location checks so the start position and the end position we shoot a line from point to point and then if we collide with something then we uh, attach actor to a component and we are attaching the actor that we that our line had hit uh, to the location of this arrow so basically over here so now if we would move this thing down a little bit and now if we would try to do this again you can see I'm inside of this thing and I'm flying all over the place like a maniac and technically I should be able to even fly out of the world well maybe in a different setting uh, this one I guess the attachment point is not the worst uh, but in some cases you might be flying all over the place and not really being able to do anything so those are the very very basics uh, you can also open up your character and have a look what kind of components it has it has like a camera it has like a camera boom which basically is like a basically like a wooden stick technically which gives like a distance between the camera and the base location 
Also characters come with the character movement, like I said, this is the important part for the character to be able to move by selecting it, you can change its default values, you can change the speeds of walking, jumping, networking, swimming, flying, whatever, uh, there's loads and loads of options for every single component out there. And those are well the very very basics of the actors. I could obviously speak about this for many many hours but well it, it's quite pointless. The main, main idea is that basically everything is an actor in your world and you can attach any logic to any object whatsoever as long as you pick the correct components to add to it. And in today's video that's gonna be it. Uh, in the following videos we're gonna talk a little bit more about what we have in the event graph, how things are working, how what are events, what are functions, what are variables. So this video probably wasn't too interesting for some of the more experienced users, but well if you are a complete beginner Obviously, you must watch all of these videos in this series and you probably want to search even more information about these topics. But well, I felt the need to talk about this topic a little bit because from what I've noticed, not everybody has some kind of a programming or whatever uh, background to these things. So all of these things might be quite new to you. So maybe you might find this information useful. So yeah, thank you for watching and I see you in the next one.